Hi, it's Tim Hagen from Progress Coaching, and welcome to another episode of Coaching Conversations. And I wanted to make you aware of something very cool that we're doing on a subscription basis, and we'll put a link in each one of our episodes. But every Wednesday, we're going to be doing what we call an audio podcast workshop. That workshop will be roughly about 14 to maybe 20 minutes per episode with each month having the theme from a coaching model, using feedback strategically to coaching self-awareness and so on. So if you could look in the body or in the content description of each episode, and you will see a link where you can join this subscription. These are literally four workshops every month teaching specific strategies to address a particular area of workplace coaching uh, as it relates, again, to things like awareness, motivation, teamwork, and what have you. Here's the cool thing. It's only $10 per month, and each month you will get a handout that we will follow along with, so we also give you a tool for you to take notes as we go through each episode. We hope you'll check it out. Recently, we ran a poll inside of LinkedIn And it was really revealing. We started to realize some of the things that people were struggling with in terms of being virtual. And it's one of those things that when you look at the uh, results, it's extremely, extremely interesting that almost 40 to 45% of people are feeling fatigued or overwhelmed by the new virtual world. Now, that is not to say what we're doing is wrong. It's our new normal. And we've heard that cliche term over and over again. Yet, when you think about being online and looking at your computer, plus working on your computer, which most people do in the corporate workplace, it really begs the question, you know, how much of this is going to fatigue us and at what expense and at what cost? So what are some alternatives? Here are four basic strategies. Four basic strategies to get people learning, get people developing, get people thinking outside of the virtual learning. First, send out an article. Send out an article of the week and have people write on a sheet of paper that a document that you could provide one thing you took away from the article positively. Now, we call this chaining training. You're chaining people's thoughts together based on the article. It's a simple idea, yet it's really interesting to see how your teammates view a piece of information or an article or um, some type of informational content. Number two send out a case study. We need to get our people thinking creatively and differently during this this crisis. So when we're in this new virtual world, we're interacting with each other, we're interacting with our customers really differently. So one of the things that we can do is to send out a case study, what would you do? And I love the show and I think it's on NBC, the show, what would you do? You present people a situation, a customer calls in and asks for X, Y, Z, or a teammate needs the following. What would you do? And when you have people get a case study and you give them a form, maybe even an interactive PDF, something that they can use, what they do is then they send it to the whole group or you send it to the manager. And what's really cool about it is it gets people not only thinking and critically thinking differently, yet you get to see how other people are solving problems. Number three, have people read a book. So we have a client right now that is um, really struggling with teamwork. Um, The new virtual world really kind of tore at the fiber of what they did very well. This is not a criticism. This is not something they were doing wrong. And so what we had to do is get them to revisit the foundation of good teamwork. So we have everybody reading the book, My Iceberg is Melting by John Cotter. It's a fable on a penguin community. Great book. Then we had them read... The Ideal Teammate by Patrick Lencioni. I'm a huge Patrick Lencioni fan. And what we had people do is just in groups, share. Now, not virtual groups. We literally had them share thoughts from each chapter. So every two weeks, we assigned a chapter, and then we asked a few questions such as, what did you take away from the chapter? What did you learn? What do you think you'll implement? And everybody started to see one another's thoughts and feelings. We started to notice a major difference. Here's the funny thing. No in-person, no virtual interaction. Last, this is probably, I think, the best thing that we can do um, to offset the fatigue of the virtual world, and that is to set up some peer-to-peer work. 
What I mean by peer-to-peer -peer work are people of similar titles, similar stature in the organization, getting together and talking. And it can just be a phone call. Have people get on the phone and just share. Share what they learned. Maybe just have them find out two unique things about each other. But get people talking to each other. Here's why. When we're on a call, and we use Zoom, we're huge fans of Zoom, so this is not about the virtual world being bad. This is really about the virtual world causing some fatigue. And what we do is we have people get back to good old-fashioned phone calls. Here's why. The virtual world can also present distractions. You'll have some people who are not used to it, and they're looking around, and where do I mute myself and where do I type into the chat and it can create a sense of frustration or confusion. So what we have people doing is just calling each other and just having a 15 to 20 minute phone call. Some of it can just be social interaction, some of it can be tied to work and what we're finding by having people do that is they're reconnecting. They're actually having conversations. Now one of the rules of engagement we encourage, you cannot have your computer open. You cannot be looking at something else. Your people that you are conversing with will hear it. And what we did is we put out a lesson and we had people actually ascertain what they heard. And so we gave out a sample conversation and you could actually hear somebody doing something like the following. Ruffling papers in the background. I said, so what message does that send? And everybody got it while well, the person's not listening. I said, don't we all do that? So all we're asking for is we're going to create a rotating schedule. You're going to get on the phone and you're just going to have a conversation. And so we gave people in dial in numbers and we said we might record them. So we were kind of faking and building in some accountability. Here was the amazing thing. The manager overseeing these departments came back and said, I'm seeing greater cooperation. Our emails are getting friendlier. I said, look. I said, I like the virtual world, but it is coming at the expense of connecting with people. So then when we thrust this thing on them called virtual and Zoom and WebEx, and you're looking at a computer to do meetings and learnings and trainings, and it's fatiguing. We just need sometimes to just talk and have conversations with each other. Now, we have a whole blog and a whole uh, podcast on conversations. The power of conversations. If you think about everything going on in the world, doesn't it come back to our ability to just converse and really listen to each other? Do we really think our politicians really talk and listen to one another? With all the protests and the riots, do we really think people are sitting down calmly and listening to one another? So again, those are a little bit over the top, a little bit theatrical, but let's bring it back to the workplace. Don't we need to just talk to each other? and sometimes just connect verbally. I hope this has helped. Thank you for listening to another episode of Coaching Conversations by Tim Hagen and Progress Coaching. Now, our company is always coming out with new and innovative solutions to help leaders coach their employees. And recently, we just created a new service called coach to You, where leaders can pick and choose topics and assign 7 to 21-day programs for employees to learn and more importantly, apply actions and then reflect and share what they're going to do going forward as a result of the learning. It's called Coach to You. We're literally bringing coaching to your employees. If you're intrigued, we'll have a link in each one of our episodes where you can get more information. And again, thank you so much for listening to another episode.